I'm going to talk a little bit about homelessness. I'm not going to say tell them to just get jobs, even though that's what my title was. Um, about uh, 30 years ago, I was working in a, in a substance abuse treatment center, and I worked with a, a man who was a psychologist. And he talked about, he was from the Midwest, and he talked about his first experience going to New York City as a, as a young man. And, his first experience with homelessness, and he's walking down the street, and he, he saw somebody laying on the street, seemed to be incapacitated. He's, he's with his friends, and he said, we, we have to help this guy. There's a guy on the street. That's, that's not right. We have to do something. And his friends just laughed at him and kept walking, and, and he, he watched, looked at them, looked at the man on the street, and he followed his friends because he didn't want to get lost in the city. And uh, as he told the story, he said, as he walked along, he saw somebody else on the street and somebody else on the street. And, and what he realized and what he was telling me in, in our work that there were going to be people that we would have to excuse me, that we would have to walk over in order to get on with our jobs. In substance abuse <laughs> treatment, thank you, Judy. In substance abuse treatment, there's a, there's a disconnect, and I love people who work in that, in that field, but there's, a, there's a, a discard effect. You're either ready or you're not ready. In homeless services, we say, are you ready to be living indoors or not? Do you have to resolve all of your issues, your problems? Do you have to solve your problems before you're allowed to come indoors? About 15 years ago, in the homeless industry, which is now an industry 30, 35 years later, in New York City, a new type of program was kind of piloted. Uh, it's called, and some of these things I'm saying are going to be very obvious. They sound very obvious, very sort of natural, but, but they're not somehow natural. But it's a program called Housing First. And in this program, we do the opposite of what my psychologist friend suggested that we do. In this program, you stop where the person is laying in the, in the street, and you engage that person, and frankly, you invite them in. And you provide housing first, and then you follow that person into the housing, provide services, and hopefully mitigate some of the issues and circumstances that led them to the street to begin with. Now, this is an idea that caught on for a couple of reasons. One, people in, who are sort of humanitarian, they, uh, and we're all humanitarian, so don't get me wrong. Uh, but, um, you know, people in the business felt that was a good thing to do. We can bring people in. Uh, people who were in business in the downtowns areas thought that was a good idea because then there's not people sleeping on our streets. It's not good for commerce. It's not good for business. It turns out it's also good from a public spending point of view in that uh, we do have a commitment as a society to keep people alive. I think that's an admirable quality that we have. And so when people are in dire straits on the street, they are taken to emergency rooms and treated. And people that we might be walking over, and if you're visiting any of our larger cities, you know we're still doing that. Um, that folks who are on the street are sort of picked up, brought to emergency rooms, sometimes 200 times or more a year. There's an incredible cost to leaving people lying on the streets. It seems a little odd, but that's, that's where we are today. And I have to say that for me, crossing over from a treatment background to a homeless service background, it took some... Uh, took some change. Uh, you know, I believe in, in, in abstinence from substances is a great way to treat alcoholism, drug addiction. It's, it's the best way. But not everybody makes it. Not everybody can do that. And I had a teacher for that. She didn't intend to be a teacher. She was a, a woman, an alcoholic, who, who took her own life at the age of 55. She wasn't on the streets at the time of her death. She was renting a small room. Uh, 
And after she died, my daughter and I were cleaning out her room. And in her room, I found written materials, books, notes, uh, letters, evidence of her work on her substance abuse uh, challenges going back for those 30 years and right up until weeks before her death. She, as, as much as anybody wanted to be sober, she did. As much as anybody I've ever known, and I've been in, in this related field for 35 years, as much as anybody I've ever known, not everybody makes it. Our lives don't necessarily go, I praise yours do, but our lives don't necessarily go the way we want them to. Anyway, my daughter and I, her daughter and I, were cleaning out her room, and we found these things. And that was about 10 years ago. About 10 years ago at that same time, in our city here, homelessness was kind of at crisis levels. And uh, our agency was asked by city officials to, uh, to build a bigger shelter to accommodate the need. There was a tent city. There were people living on the streets. It's a small city, but it's common. We think of New York. We think of Boston. Los Angeles has 25,000 people living on the streets right now. It's a massive, this is an epidemic problem we have. But our small city, for its size, homelessness was a huge, huge problem. And so we were asked to build a bigger shelter. Now, shelters are great. They're necessary, we need them. We need people to have a place to sleep at night, but we need more than that. And so we didn't build a shelter. We built something we call a resource center. And we did that for two reasons. We built a place that meets the practical needs of people who are out there. We invite them in, we're inviting them in. <clears throat> we, we do have overnight shelter, but we also have three meals. We have a medical clinic. We have a place to, for people to be during the day. I mean, again, this, this isn't rocket science. It, but somehow the practical has, has kind of evaded us a little bit. Housing First is, is a strategy that, that took hold. It was featured in a major uh, US magazine. Uh, and, and people, that really caught on. People thought, well, we have a solution. We're going to end homelessness. And <clears throat> that, uh, that sounded really good, um, but it's a, it's a big problem. Last night in America, we would guess there were 600,000 people who were homeless. I mentioned LA, Seattle now is allowing, permitting uh, tent cities. They're so overrun, their shelters are overrun. There's a massive service system, but they're overrun. In, in my latest conversations with people from, uh, from HUD, they're, uh, they're asking that we consider this uh, a, a public uh, health crisis. So there's a huge uh, problem despite all our best efforts. We, with our resource center, and against a small city, it's a small idea in some ways, but Part of our philosophy with a resource center is to say that we're not just providing for people who are out there. We're looking for people who are out there to bring them back in because ultimately they're a resource to us. They are resources that are missing. A thousand men came through our small facility this past year. How many daughters have not had their fathers? How many of these men, if they're restored to their lives, become fathers again? We need the folks that are out there. Nearly 300 women. These are mothers and grandmothers. I've had grandchildren come to our facility to visit. The grandmothers. We need the wisdom of our elders. Elders who maybe have lived a life that is not the life <laughs> that we, we wanted. And, and they'll tell you that, you know. How, you know, what kind of life lesson is it 
when I talk to my kids about some of the mistakes that I have made in my life, they're like, well, gee, you were kind of foolish. Well, yeah, yeah, I was very foolish. And I don't want you to be. I want you to learn from me and have a better life, you know? And that's what we want, and that's what guys want. We have a guy who came into our Housing First program a number of years ago. We're talking about significant periods of time sometimes that it takes to restore people to a, a life that is more satisfying for everybody involved. But he is, <clears throat> he's right now looking for a two bedroom apartment. He has a daughter who's in foster care. He's progressed enough, he's gotten a job, he's gotten clean and sober, he's gonna be taking his teenage daughter in to live with them, the mother's not involved, and so we've, we've renewed a resource. We have renewable resources out there. And a man is gonna be a father to his teenage daughter. We have a woman who's in her, in her 40s. Her life didn't go as she wanted. She, <clears throat> she takes a bus, two buses each way to get to her job as a part-time uh, working in a fast food restaurant. She's a resource to me. She's an inspiration. I'm thrilled. She's been in shelter almost a year now, unfortunately, because looking for housing takes time especially when you're earning a relatively small amount of money, but she's doing it. She's a resource to me, I said, but she's a resource to her employer. And here's how I know that she is. Her employer knows that she's moving into an apartment. She hasn't had an apartment in a long time. And the, the woman she works for is buying her pots and pans, dishes, a coffee pot, Simple things that we might take for granted. She's handing those off to her because this is a valuable employee. I don't know how many of you are supervisors or who hire people. I've been hiring people for years. If you find a good employee, that's a resource, you know? But this is also a woman of character. She's a resource to all of us. The folks that we can bring in and return to society, it's a benefit to us. I know there's charity, there's sort of things that feel overwhelming. The numbers of people alone feel very overwhelming. But there, is, there are people out there who matter, who matter. And I think if we just change our headset a little bit and we think of it that way, we can make a little bit of a difference. We can't change everything. But man, we have to try. We have to try. And we're doing that. So thank you. Thanks.